readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. Welcome back to the channel today. We, the Brothers Grin, myself, we are my brother Ed. We're going to be talking about what we read in August. It's quite a weird month, we're quite busy doing quite a few things. I actually read less than usual, even though it's that summer month, but Ed, we still, as usual, got through a big old bunch. So let's just go straight into it. Ed, you want to kick us off with what you read in? First thing I read, I was August. doing my reread of The Faith and the Fallen. I hit up Valor. This is where Maquin really comes into his own, or Mackin, as some people say. Um, I like to say Matt Quinn. <coughs> That's how Dad pronounces it. So the old wolf. Um, but the old wolf. Yeah, Matt Quinn oh. is a pretty awesome dude. Uh, Valor. I absolutely love Valor because it has some amazing set pieces. It's got um, a little bit of a chase sequence. It's got multi POVs really blending well and meeting each other, which I absolutely love. I think Dad does it so well. It's almost uh, it reminds me of how the way Abercrombie handles. Um, uh, POVs meeting each other and you know there's always these funny little thoughts they have about each other which I absolutely love. The ending of Valor will rip your heart out so classic dad book um, and yeah classic. I love Valor and I'll be talking about Ruin in a minute. It's one of those that uh, we actually do top 10 moments of Valor if you want to watch that obviously if you've read <coughs> on The Fallen uh, but yes now on to mine and that is I finished on Audible, The Return of the King, the version is narrated by Andy Serkis, which was absolutely awesome. I said it every time I've listened to a book by him before The Hobbit, The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers, that he is fantastic at obviously the accents, but also surprisingly amazing at creating that tone and atmosphere, the huge variety from the ethereal enchanting aspect of Rivendell to... Uh, the uh, the greedy lands of men uh, and everything in between. And yeah, I absolutely adore The Return of the King. I just love this world so, so much. I'm actually currently reading The Silmarillion. So uh, there we go. It shows how much I love it. Um, and yes, The Return of the King. It was awesome to read it again at Ned. That how, many, how many times have you read The Silmarillion? I think this will be my third or fourth. Yeah, it's true. In bed. It's true. It's not enough, Drums really, is in it? the deep. Drums in the deep. It's not <laughs> enough, really, is it? Not enough. But yes, that is The Return of the King. And the next one for me is Stephen... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Stephen Pressfield's A Man at Arms. Um, now, this is a book. I probably didn't enjoy it as much as I usually do enjoy a Stephen Pressfield book. Yeah, this is Stephen Pressfield's first book of the, of the ancient world, the classical era, for about 13, 14 years, I believe. Uh, and A Man at Arms is going with the Romans instead of the ancient Greeks, which usually Stephen Pressfield's very well known for. Uh, a Man at Arms follows a grizzled old veteran Roman soldier, an ex-legionary. Um, he's a bit of a merc now, and uh, he takes on a mission, because he's got these great morals, um, to protect this message from Saul, I think Paul the Apostle. Um, and yeah, it's basically kind of, him protecting a few other people uh, and this message that he's carrying as well and he's always he's got the different people after him bandits and romans and bears oh my that kind of thing um so yeah but no i you know i enjoyed it enough it's kind of obviously it's got stephen pressfield's classical classic kind of mm. philosophical approach but i don't think his writing was on as on form here as it usually is usually when i read the first page of a stephen pressfield novel i am straight away and i just feel like i'm reading something magical uh didn't quite have this that feeling <coughs> here for me sorry um but maybe it's just me i think i'd recommend different people go check it out it's such a short book anyway so read the first few chapters and see if you like it see it's one of those isn't it when an author writes such an amazing book like how we both feel about gates of fire that uh, every book you pick up afterwards, you're thinking, is this going to be another one? Yeah. Them? So you've got higher and expectations. The Afghan campaign was great as well. Obviously not to the heights of Gates of Fire, because that is like top three books ever, probably, or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, but yeah, so I think still, still you know, Stephen Press was still an awesome writer. And do you want to give us your next one? You read quite a few more than me. So. I did. I was very lucky to, uh, to meet and also read Meet and read Dan Jones. <laughs> yeah. uh, I read Dan Jones's Essex Dogs. This is a tale of 1346 of the English landing in France. Basically, um, the Battle of Normandy, Omaha Beach, that kind of thing. Uh, and and then this uh, this English army are advancing towards the Battle of Cressy, which is where Edward the Black Prince wins his spurs at the mellow age of 16 years old. And uh, Essex Dogs, <coughs> awesome book. Absolutely loved it. Um, one of my favourite medieval books that I've read now, and it just got me so excited to, to you know, read more in this era as well, which is always good with historical fiction. Dan Jones is known for his non-fiction. He's an awesome writer. Um, you know, writing 
in such a fluid and informative way that never gets dull. It is always very kind of, accessible. You know, very accessible. Lots era. of humour as well. I love it. Uh, and Essex Dogs is no different. Even though it's historical fiction, there is so much fun in these pages. I had so much fun reading this book. Uh, I loved it for the historical details as well as the characters. There are some fantastic and noble men, Warwick and Northampton here, which are just absolutely hilarious. Yeah. But the humour here is fantastic. They just feel uh, very real. And there they? are some very, very poignant moments as well. And I think Dan Jones is really onto a winner here. And we're onto a winner as well by being able to read this book. So um, I will explain later. Well, I'll explain now. I can't do Book of the Month, basically, because there are three books that are just utterly amazing. I couldn't choose between them. And Essex Dogs is one of them. Yes, I also loved Essex Dogs, but I talked about it. In, but I finished it in September. So I won't be talking about it in this video. I'm jumping ahead, aren't I? Yeah. But yeah, we will have a review for Essex Dogs coming out at some point in the next few yes, weeks. We will. But next up, I have Until the Last by Mike Shackle. We were very lucky to interview the man himself. How long ago? About a month ago. About a month, month ago, ago now. Yeah. Um, uh, on the release of Until the Last, the finale of his trilogy, The Last War, and Until the Last is the biggest of the lot. And I'm happy it was because more pages, more words, more brilliant action mm -hmm. and characters from Mike Shackle. Uh, yes, this has gone down as one of my favourite series of all time until the last really stuck the landing. It was a riveting, engaging read that lived up to my expectations after being just blown away completely by the first two in the Stormers. It really is a huge journey where whilst it changes so much and raises in scale, it also keeps the heart of what I've really loved about characters who aren't necessarily the most powerful or brave being at the heart of the story, making big decisions that have consequences, but also not feeling <laughs> like they are actually controlling the consequences in the moment. It's all a bit of a panic and a lot of chaos thrown into the mix. But yeah, until the last, absolutely fantastic. I'd recommend re uh, everyone reading his uh, No Mike book reviews will be picking up at some point. I'm very excited to hear his thoughts. I think this is right up his street. I think he will adore it. Absolutely. And I, I should have got to that this month, but uh, time ran away with me. <laughs> Another book that isn't out yet. Well, it wasn't out yet, but it is now is... Children of Gods and Fighting Men by Shauna Lawless. What a beautiful copy. This is my lovely special edition from The Broken Binding, as was that um, Essex Dogs version as well. Um, Children of Gods and Fighting Men is a historical fiction meets fantasy, um, Viking Age meets Irish mythology. And uh, it's absolutely fantastic. If you, if you want to see our thoughts on it, then go and check out our review because we both read it, loved it, and yeah, adored it and recommended it. Um, so yeah, not much else I can say here that I didn't say in my review, but I loved it. And this is one of my top three books of the month, which I couldn't choose for the book of the month. So yeah. yeah, so we call the video where we reviewed it, The New Madeline Miller, question mark, because it's that historical fantasy, a mythological retelling with well, a lot of inspiration where it's not as much of a retelling as many others are so mm. it's a lot more original in many senses yeah. uh, but yes it is being inspired by, by mythology so obviously it's going to be compared to Madeline Miller and I think that Sean Lawless really writes in it a similar understated kind of subtle way but I actually prefer the children not fighting down in. with the details but yeah exactly it's kind of that longer in, uh, instead of the kind of short abrupt <coughs> language that a lot of people uh, authors use to really mm. keep you in the moment it's, it's it really builds up really love it's beautiful prose um, but it's not really flowery where you get bogged down in that as exactly as he said Ed, exactly as he said Amen. Uh, but yeah we both loved it and then i carried on with my reread of the faith in the fallen with ruin your favorite book of the faith in the fallen lots yeah. of people's favorite as well um that deal the deal the last page that cover the cover everything about this book i absolutely love uh, even the color beautiful never thought i'd like mustard on a book but here we are made it it's work like a nice hot dog of fantasy and wolves and swords um but i that love should be on the cover next time. <laughs> I, I love her in so much it's got these amazing character moments it's got um everything i love about the faith in the fallen the celtic you know uh, irish welsh landscapes the language the giants giants becoming friends with humans giants becoming friends with bears giants and bears eating humans uh, pretty scary stuff. Spoiler. Um, and yeah, it's uh, some fantastic <laughs> Not really. set pieces here. And there is a duel here that's my favourite duel. Written, it's that one. And then it's got to be, oh, second best duel. Logan. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'll no, say we'll End say of the Last guessing. Argument of Kings. Also, uh, and um, then number three, Bernard. Durville. Yeah, versus, exactly. uh, Saxon Git. Um, and then. <laughs> that's his actual name. Uh, number four. Oh, another great duel. 
That's right, Great one five. in the Trade Sun cycle. Um, number five. Got to be another jewel out there that we love. Ah, Blood Song. Blood Song. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a nice jewel in Empire of the Vampire, is there not? Yes. Kind of. Well, partially. Partial. Yeah. It's a different kind of jewel. Yeah. And also, the Princess Bride. We love yes. that. Uh, but yeah, anyway. I thought you were just going to keep <laughs> on going. Digress. Number seven. Number seven. <coughs> you know we love a ranking yeah. tier video. We should do proper tiers. Like, you know, you like do it on the computer. And I know. You know, I looked at, you know, and people have the S tier, A tier, B It looks really tier. nice, yeah. Uh, I just don't know how they actually do it. If any, um, anyone who has done a video like that, could you tell us how to do it in the description below, please? Um, because... If you're watching, would you like to see us do those kind of videos? I think I would enjoy it, but obviously mm. if you guys don't want to watch it, then no point. But we yeah, should, I, just could, anyway. I, just, I just couldn't get my head around how to do it. <laughs> Aww, me neither. Um, but yeah, Ruin, wonderful. Go on, Ed, give us another one. I've only got one uh, more. So. No, so here's one I listened to. The one I listened to was Zach Argyle's um, Voice of War. Uh, this is a self-published book, and again, it's a bit more self-published lately, and I heard a lot of great things about Zach Argyle's um, work on Twitter. And um, uh, yeah, it's a really interesting uh, book with lots of interesting and kind of unique concepts about uh, magic and um, and the characters as well. The main character uh, is uh, a general, kind of a, a high captain, and he's... Um, uh, he's protecting his family. He's he's got a child, and it was kind of it's quite nice to read about you know a father in fantasy that wasn't a raging psychopath. Um, but you know he did have some some quirky voices in his head, which was a uh, which was a different dynamic as well. Um, I think I you know I I kind of enjoyed it. There are a few bits that I think kind of it, it was a bit bloated, uh, and I think there are a few things that I read that quite, quite, didn't quite add too much to the story. Uh, but I think, you know, it's, it's well worth checking out, definitely. I think Library of a, a Viking did a great review on it as well, which definitely got me excited. But it's, it's, it's a series I'll, I'll probably carry on as well in the future. And uh, and I tried some of it in Audible as well. And, um, and yeah, that was really cool. The, uh, the narration was fantastic. Very so, nice. Yeah. Right. yeah, you're trying a lot more variety. But yes, so now on to an Audible read of mine. This the final one I read in August. As I said, it's a bit of a slower month. Um, but uh, there's two books... That I was, oh, three actually, because non fiction I was right on the end of finishing, so there'll be quite a few done in September. Yeah. Anyway, I'll digress. Um, I finished Priest of Crowns by Peter McLean, so this is the finale to another series <coughs> that uh, we have loved over the last few years, and that is War for the Rose Throne. And we actually had an interview with Peter McLean last year, if you want to check that out. I'll what have a great guy. Yeah. Um, and yes, Priest of Crowns is the fourth instalment in the series. He made us really and scared to read. He did, because and it? rightfully so, because this yeah. book is brutal to the characters that we have grown very attached to. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is no happy Disney ending here. Um, sorry, Ed. Ed loves a Disney ending, <laughs> but not in Priest of Crowns. That is not what we're getting. Although I don't think any of us expected it. But there's always hope, isn't there? Always <laughs> yeah. hope that Thomas Party and a the gang hope. are just going to make it a full out. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Party and the whole gang are going to make it through unscathed. But, be uh, drinking a last brandy at the end with just having a little smile catch up with faces. everyone else. Yeah, yeah. doubt it. Unfortunately. But yeah, it was a great ending to the series. <coughs> I also listened to Priest of Crowns. It's my favourite book of War for the Rose Throne series. We'll be doing a video very soon on why you guys should read War for the Rose Throne because it is one of our favourite fantasy series out there. Obviously, everyone says sure. it's Peaky Blinders meets fantasy, and really it is. There's no better comparison than that. In a medieval um, setting. In a medieval setting. Oh, what I liked about Priest of Crowns was it was much more unique and diverse compared to the other books in the series as well. And I've, all of them I've either rated five or four stars as well. So, um, but yeah, Priest of Crowns was another book that was going to be book of the month. I think if I if I read Priest if I read these three books in different months, and they would have been book of the month by far. Honestly, they're absolutely fantastic. All three of them, I just cannot choose. But Priest of Crowns was superb. Very nice. Then is that your last one? Oh no. Well, I also. Ahead. Reread Legend by David Gemmell. I thought I just I just had to. Just I, I miss reading that. David Gemmell. I haven't read Legend since I was a teenager, all those years ago. So uh, I thought I'd give it a go, and I absolutely loved it. I actually listened to the narration this time, and I think it's Sean Barrett who narrates it. He's superb. His voice for Druss Daywalker is absolutely fantastic, um, and yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, Druss is a fantastic character. Legend is an awesome book. David Gemmell writing heroes like no one else writes heroes. Uh, it's so exciting, so poignant as well. Got really emotional moments. Uh, and there are characters that you just grow so attached to. David Gemmell is it's like the bridge between Tolkien and modern fantasy, I yeah. think. I think he perfectly... Um, he's got flawed characters, characters, but he's still got those traditional elements. Yeah, he's it? got traditional elements, but 
as, as Will said, flawed characters, morally grey, which are also kind of heroes, anti-heroes at times mm. as well, but they're so much fun to read. Yeah, there's still a good side and bad side, but it's a lot of the main players in it are the flawed characters, so you're not sure if you, who you want to win out of them, mm. isn't it? To be sure. So it's interesting in that way. Yeah. Any more, Ed? Uh, yeah, I also Friday. listened to uh, Conor Gooden's Emperor Gate, The Gates of Rome, which is a series I read as a teenager. Uh, and somehow I, I loved it so much that I really liked Caesar, which probably wasn't the best result. But um, yeah, I listened to this. I listened to the first book. It wasn't as amazing as I remembered, but you know that's that's kind of reading something as a teenager. I was very impressionable back then. Still am really. But um, I think this is um, if you are a Roman nerd, don't read the series because it's kind of riddled with inaccuracies. If you don't really care about the inaccuracies, which are, you know, I'm getting better at not really being too fussed about them. You're working um, on it. Yeah, then it's well worth a read. If this was set in the Viking Age, if and, you know, it was had all those inaccuracies, I would be really upset. And Or like the 15th century or something, it would be something much closer to my heart. I'd be really upset. But because it's Romans, I mean, who cares about the Romans anyway? Who really likes them? I'm you sorry. You love the Romans. And, uh, no, I don't love the Romans. Well, you love We love the like Iceni, William. Okay? Yeah. If you read Boudicca's series, you will never love the Romans again. Alan, stop <laughs> the Roman stuff. You need to read Boudicca, okay, by Amanda Scott. That will you won't love the Romans anymore. You'll never love the Romans again. again. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> Emperor Gates of Rome. It, 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 it's got Conor Gooden's great set pieces, dynamic characters, and uh, uh, and you know the plot is all, always fun and engaging. You know, it's never kind of a dull moment in a Con Igledon book. But obviously, if you know lots about Caesar in particular, probably don't read it. You might cry. You might cry. <laughs> Done and dusted. Lemon cry, and mustard. He's... Don't swear. On camera. Crikey, yeah. <laughs> well, Ed's got through his humongous pile. That's only um, nine books. Only nine. Very nice, Ed. Ed? That's what Sar Sauron said. Only nine. Only nine? <laughs> That's what the, the Witch King said. Only nine of us. <laughs> in that voice, exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yes, yeah, that, that is what we <laughs> read in August. Yeah. So I also watched The Sad Man, which I absolutely loved. We're going to be talking about some of the fantasy shows in the next few weeks or oh, months. Oh, the fantasy No, 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 no spoilers, oh. no spoilers. We're happy with parts, not so happy with others. Uh, but yes, this is what we read in August. Thank you everyone for watching. What did you read in August? What was your favourite read of the month? Thank you so much for watching. Truth and Courage, The Brothers Quinn. See ya. <laughs>